Hi folks, this is Tony for a minute to midnight.com with a short video update on some things which I believe are important that you all know. Developments that are happening in the world at the moment that are not good. First, I want to look at an article that was published at altmarket.com called The Totalitarian Future Globalists Want for the Entire World is Being Revealed. And I'll just read a few little bits of it here, focusing firstly on Australia and New Zealand. Right now, Australia and New Zealand are slamming citizens with perhaps the most draconian measures yet in the Western world. These are policies that the elites want to introduce everywhere, but they are going full bore in Australia and it just keeps getting worse. In various areas of Australia, Level 4 response measures have been enforced for at least the next six weeks, including curfews, strict mask policies, including people being forced to wear masks outside, contrary to everything science and virology has to say about how the possibility of transmission in sunlight and open air. Residents are not allowed to travel more than three miles from their home and only one person from a household is allowed to leave at any given time. Citizens violating these rules are subject to $10,000 fines or arrest and yes, people are being arrested simply for not wearing a mask or from being too far from home. In New Zealand, the situation has become increasingly grim and I think it should be treated as a warning to Americans, especially as to our potential future is we allow the narrative of public health security to be turned into a vehicle for tyranny. While Australia has been using quarantine facilities to enforce people considered high risk to isolate, New Zealand quarantine camps are now fully under the control of the military and all citizens that test positive or are suspected to have COVID can be separated from their families and placed in the camps, which are hotels converted into prisons, he, he says. That's Brandon's interpretation of it. It is the complete erasure of of personal liberties all because of an increase in cases which has amounted to a mere 525 deaths in Australia and 22 deaths in New Zealand. Uh, we can no longer have people uh, visiting others, we can no longer have people simply out and about uh, for no good reason whatsoever. Uh, it is not an easy decision to make but it is the decision that is necessary and that is why I have made it uh, and that's why uh, police will be out in force and you will be stopped and you will be asked and you will need to demonstrate that you are lawfully out. I believe, says Brandon Smith, the reason Australia and New Zealand has been targeted with this level of restrictions first is because they have been almost fully disarmed and have no means to defend themselves from government overstep. So that's his opinion. I agree with it for the most part. Um, some aspects of it perhaps not totally, but you can see uh, what's happening here in these two countries, Australia and New Zealand. And Australia and New Zealand are both part of the Five Eyes Network. And also, I've noted over the years that New Zealand particularly seems to be a guinea pig for introducing measures that later uh, go global. Like New Zealand was one of the first countries, for example, to introduce plastic cards and so on. Um, and I think it's a, because it's a small country it's easy to test out things on the people and then apply them later to the rest of the world if they work. Boss of Qantas has taken a swipe at state border closures claiming they're further crippling the airline already smashed by the COVID pandemic. Alan Joyce today revealing profit has plunged by two billion dollars with our national carrier all but grounded. The worst trading conditions in a 100 year history. It's a $1.9 billion loss. Profit is down 91%. Alan Joyce says overseas flights won't resume until the middle of next year, at the earliest. As for the US, end of 2021, maybe. Alan Joyce says border closures are being driven by politics and not medical science. We would be very happy, and I think a lot of businesses would be very happy if it was science-based and very clear. Alan Joyce wanted clarity. Queensland's Anastasia Palaszczuk punched back. I'm not going to bend to anyone. It is a tough time at the moment. 
But uh, you know, Qantas is free to operate within Queensland and those other states. But Qantas needs more, much more, to stop hemorrhaging. Back to what Brandon Smith had to say. That said, I see that similar measures will be attempted in the US as well. In states like New York, there are low-key programs to set up COVID checkpoints, stopping and checking vehicles coming into the state. This is where heavier restrictions start. First, checkpoints will be established in the name of keeping infected people out of a state or city. Then those same checkpoints will be used to keep people from leaving a state or city. Then checkpoints will be set up at random to test people for fever or symptoms of illness. If allowed to continue, the natural progression of checkpoints is to terrify the population into not travelling anywhere for any reason. Like in Australia and New Zealand, people will be effectively imprisoned in their homes. At this stage, bringing in laws or executive orders punishing people for leaving homes will be easier. They will have already acclimated to being trapped at home anyway. And of course, along with this, they are going to want to try and implement mandatory vaccination. And case in point, here we see the state of Virginia a few days go back, according to ABC News. State Health Commissioner Dr Norman Oliver told 8 News on Friday, this was from August 22nd, this article, that he plans to mandate coronavirus vaccinations for Virginians once one is made available to the public. He says that as long as he's still the health commissioner, he intends to mandate the coronavirus vaccine. And back to New Zealand for a minute. A group of Kiwi businessmen and former politicians are looking to strike a deal with the Kremlin to bring Russia's as yet unproven coronavirus vaccine to New Zealand. Former National MP Ross Murant, former ACT leader Don, Bra Don Brash and other backers um, have formed a company called Covex NZR Limited and filed paperwork through the Russian embassy to establish supply and distribution arrangements to bring the vaccine to New Zealand. And Don Brash said he became involved in Covax NZR as New Zealand desperately needs a vaccine, so exploring all avenues was important. Why does New Zealand desperately need a vaccine? That's just propaganda. Interestingly though, there is a rising um, number of people that are protesting against lockdowns and so forth. And just yesterday in New Zealand, uh, there was a protest in Auckland from stuff.co.nz. Police disappointed but no punishment for 500 protesters breaching lockdown. Auckland police say they are disappointed with hundreds of people who gathered in the CBD to protest the coronavirus alert level 3 lockdown. The group of about 500 gathered at Aotea Square before walking down Queen Street to Brito Mart on Saturday. The majority of protesters were not wearing masks nor did they adhere to social distancing rules. But no punishments will be handed out as police are taking an educational approach. Acting Inspector Chris Scott said. Hey, it's good to see so many people coming out here for freedom and democracy. People are standing up and expressing themselves. This lockdown, it shouldn't have happened, it's not necessary. And also people are asking hard questions. That's important, that's democratic, and I support them asking. Police recognise people's lawful right to protest. However, we also recognise the need for for people to adhere to the current level 3 restrictions to do their part to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. But Advanced New Zealand co-leader Jamie Ross attended the Freedom March and said it was an important cause. There are real New Zealanders that are standing up for our rights, standing up for freedom and democracy, he said. This is not the country I grew up in where the military are on checkpoints in and out of Auckland. And I totally agree, never would have thought we would have seen that in New Zealand. Not that I'm there at the moment, of course, I'm in Pennsylvania at the moment, but it is my home. Police said officers would be carrying out high visibility patrols at places such as supermarkets, pharmacies and beaches. Police patrolling for masks, I suppose, and social distancing. Imagine that, being arrested for not wearing a mask or for not being six feet away from someone or two metres in New Zealand. Checkpoints preventing all 
but people travelling for essential purposes into and out of the region remain in place across North and South Auckland. Now many of you will remember or know about the Event 201 which took place late last year with a practice run for a pandemic like COVID-19 and one of the things they did was talk in that practice run about how to control the flow of information and weed out disinformation and so on. So it was really like so obvious. Bill Gates and and uh, CDC and others involved in a planned um, run through ahead of coronavirus COVID-19 and setting into place their methods for dealing with things like disinformation. The mission of the Pandemic Emergency Board is to provide recommendations to deal with the major global challenges arising in response to an unfolding pandemic. Now one of my pet hates really is disinformation that is spread through the so-called truth community, often like fake news and so on, and often times it's good to know that people who want to make a fake news video will do things like dress up in a lab coat because it gets people thinking it's a real doctor and we don't always know whether they are or not and if there's no sources quoted um, that you can really check up then I would be dubious about it and also I did see a video that came out recently that claimed that Fauci and Gates were roommates in the past and that George Soros founded Moderna and I couldn't find any proof for that stuff so I would put that in the possible fake news um, category though I can't say for sure because some people may have more information on it but to me it's like "Mm, I'm not sure about that one but there is a lot of truth that is being spread and we need to be very very diligent about seeking what is truth and what isn't But at the same time, I'm dead against the controls that are coming through social media and so on um, to control the narrative. And this uh, article from LifeSite News, August 28th, says this, and I'll read it. The scandal-plagued World Health Organization, WHO, or the WHO, is working with an analyst company to social listen and monitor millions of people's social media accounts to combat coronavirus misinformation. According to August 25th, WHO News post titled Immunising the Public Against Misinformation, the WHO which is the health arm of the United Nations, claim there is an overabundance of information and the rapid spreading of misleading and fabricated news, images and videos regarding the coronavirus. We are not just battling the virus. Who Director General Tedros Adhanom, whatever his name, Ghebreyesus, was quoted as saying in the news release. We are also battling the trolls and conspiracy theorists that push misinformation and undermine the outbreak response. The WHO says they are working with more than 50 digital companies and social media platforms that include Google, TikTok and YouTube to ensure that science-based health messages from the organisation or other official sources appear first when people search for information related to COVID-19. That is an overreach, in my opinion. They have effectively become the Ministry of Truth, determining what is allowed to be shared and what isn't. And it's much like Jacinda Ardern in the New Zealand government, which in March before the first lockdown, basically Jacinda said if it didn't come from them, you can't trust it. Folks, it is important to be aware that there is an information war out there and that there are also, as well as controlled um, government obvious media outlets there are also people that are deliberate disinformation agents that I believe are put there to sow misinformation and disinformation so that it gives them an excuse to clamp down on the so-called conspiracy theorists well it's not conspiracy theory when it's conspiracy fact is it but the problem is sorting out which things are fact and which are fake and that can be difficult Folks, the elite, the controllers believe they have their machine in full run now and we will be seeing more protests. That's another thing that's going on, protests and riots 
and even a guillotine being rolled out at one protest at least recently. Portland police said they arrested 14 people overnight following violent clashes between rival groups of demonstrators that roiled the city's downtown area earlier in the day. You can change. You don't have to do this. Police said they declared a riot just before midnight on Saturday. And nothing is really being done to stop this because they are creating chaos from which they can bring their order. And this has always been the goal. There were scuffles in downtown Portland between anti-racism protesters and right-wing demonstrators. Participants clad in body armor and helmets traded punches and blasts of pepper spray as police officers mostly looked on, according to video of the clashes. And this has always been the goal um, to create this chaos so they can bring their world order out of that chaos. Another thing I believe that is rapidly coming is going to be food and product shortages. And folks, I highly recommend that you stock up now while you still have the opportunity because I believe that opportunity, that window is rapidly running out and we are going to see massive food shortages in the very near future. The Elite Machine, as I say, is in full run right now and I just want to finish by playing you this clip from Manly P. Hall, 33rd degree Freemason, his last speech in 1990. Almost all of the secret societies of the past have been dedicated to clean up jobs. They've all come like the Knights Templars to take care of the corruptions of various beliefs and doctrines. They came to take place, take the place of political corruption that was beyond hope. Every day, in every way, the brothers were at work, sometimes secretly but always continuously. And in the next uh, period of time, it seems to me we have masonry is coming of age. Whether we realize it or not, it has been with us in one way or another for over 4,000 years. It has led us through many desperate emergencies. It has given us the strength to do great things. It has given us Washington and Franklin and Jefferson. It has given us all kinds of uh, di uh, disciplined support. It has given us great ideals and great hopes and great visions. And now comes the time when these have got to be put into action. There is no reason why there should not be a powerful reuniting of the light of masonry in the hearts of every Freemason. We're not asking for treason. We're not asking for disobedience. We're asking for dedication. We're asking the nation to get down and do what is necessary and possible for him to do. But at the beginning of the 21st century, the Paraclete, the Prince of Peace, will come. And there will be a long time when the world will be in a blessed state of understanding. And to bring that understanding about the integrities, the dedications, the beliefs, the hopes and ideals of the secret organizations of the last five year, thousand years can be brought together in one definite purpose. Freemasonry has been punished for its love of truth. But out of its punishment came the United States. We were founded by Masonic pressures. We were founded by Masons. We were founded by some of the best minds of our time, the most dedicated minds of our time. We were founded by people who sacrificed much and also gave their lives in many cases. But we came through. We came through because of a definite determination that the way of light shall prevail. Therefore, it is very important to us to make sure that this light does prevail that it goes on to help us with all the things that are necessary for us to do in order to keep this world going. I think we can all remember with some measure the, the struggle of the 17th century, which was probably one of the most interesting periods. Masonry was there under its own name. There's no question about that. It was the day of the alchemists. It was the day of the Illuminati. It was the day of all the mysteries and symbols of the Rosicrucians. It was a time in which society 
was attempting to transmute itself. It was seeking to turn base metals into gold, ignorance into wisdom, false doctrines into truth. And a mysterious order appeared at that time. It has never been completely identified, but it published certain manifestos telling the world that there were those who were behind the scenes who were working and would continue to work and would never cease working until the great labor had been accomplished. That was not the complete speech of Manny P. Hall. I did edit it down to shorten it and just put some of the most important pieces in there. And remember when he's talking about the light, the light of masonry is Lucifer, not the true one true God and his Christ, Paraclete and so on. It's the Antichrist that they are looking for will not be the true Christ, will not be the true Jesus. So just realize this is where they are going with all of this and we must as Christians be aware of what's going on and not be deceived ourselves. Folks this is all a long planned takedown of our western civilization and it is in full flight now as I mentioned. Don't forget our website is a minute to midnight.com if you found this video helpful please like it and remember that A Minute to Midnight is run 100% by donations and if you're able to donate to help us that's always hugely appreciated and you can do that at our website a minute to midnight.com. That's about it for this video. We should be back in a few days time with another video God willing.